Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to start things off with a little something regarding NVIDIA Ampere. So we've been talking a lot about Ampere from NVIDIA as of course is what we're expecting to see follow up from Turing. In fact, before Turing actually came out and Volta was doing the rounds, we did speculate that Ampere might be the next generation instead of Turing because that name kept popping up and leaks and such at the time as well. Obviously it ended up being Turing, but Ampere is following. Now we learned some time ago that the Ampere based graphics cards from NVIDIA will be launching in 2020. We've had a few comments and leaks regarding this and this has again come up a few times, but we didn't know when in 2020. You know, an entire year is a fairly lengthy span of time, I'm sure you'll agree, even though it does seem to go rather quickly. I mean, it's already October. Just, just how? Um, but regardless of all that, we have an interesting report thanks to Igor's lab, and you can find that linked in the description below this video. So, according to his report, we're going to be seeing Ampere launch in the first half of 2020. Now, he has proven himself to be very reliable, and again, this is not the first time we've heard 2020. We've seen an EEC certification and a Digitimes report and a bunch of other stuff as well. But at least according to Igor, we are going to be seeing it in the first half of 2020. Now just to kind of recap everything we know about Ampere, we are seeing it being based on Samsung's 7nm EU process because as you may recall as we discussed at the time they made a pretty significant effort to get it instead of TSMC who of course have been an absolute tear they've found themselves in basically all of AMD stuff if you know there's their 7nm process and all their other things that they're doing outside of that as well so it is going to be interesting to see Samsung enter the ring here with Nvidia's Ampere GPUs. It's probably going to be some time before we even hear an inkling as to what these cards are going to be called and even longer before we see any more information about what sort of specs we can expect, performance and price. Now one thing I do think that Nvidia absolutely have to nail is that price versus performance. You know, we've discussed uh, recently in a podcast, Paul and I, how if Nvidia had started out their launch of Turing, with the super cards, like the, those sort of specs, but with the price that they were at, they probably would have been much better received because obviously the main criticism of Turing when they officially were announced and then released was the fact that they were very expensive. And obviously they, they bring with them a bunch of new technology, ray tracing and so on and so forth, but they were still pretty damn pricey uh, for the performance increases that you got but super obviously did bring it a bit more reasonable when it comes to price versus performance so nvidia may want to avoid the same thing happening again i'm sure they, the top end is still going to be mega bucks because well it's the top end but if it has still the performance to make the money worth it then that's what i mean when i say price versus performance, or if you want to use a more standard uh, industry term, performance per dollar. I would be curious to get your feedback though guys as to whether or not you would consider getting an Ampere GPU if it had the right specs or have you just been too burned by Turing or have you, or you're loyal to AMD or are you going to wait to see what Intel is up to with XE? I'm very excited to see what exactly they pull off with that particular entry as of course it is going to be their very first foray into the discrete graphics arena. Long story short, 2020 is not going to be boring for graphics. So we're going to move on from NVIDIA now to Ryzen, specifically the Ryzen 9 3950X. So of course there's quite a bit of chatter and excitement around the very first 16 core CPU from AMD and we have a really cool overclocking guide which has been posted by Gigabyte which basically is a little sneak preview as to what you can expect if you really want to crank up that overclocking for this particular processor. So before we get into the results that Gigabyte managed to get, the testing rig was kind of a more you might actually have this at home scenario. We have seen some overclocking done with 3950X which has been pretty crazy, but these were all done with liquid nitrogen which you're not going to have in the garage most likely. But this was all done with an EK kit P360 liquid cooler which is a bit more realistic in terms of what someone might actually have in their rig. The rest of it was a uh, Gigabyte X570 Aorus master motherboard and 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 memory. So of all the 
red tape out of the way, all the details out of the way, what results do they actually get? Well, according to their findings, the Ryzen 9 3950X was stable at 4.3 GHz with a voltage of 1.416 volts. They, of course, didn't just monitor the clock speeds, they also put it through the ringer a little bit in the benchmark Citibench R15 and again this was 4.3 gigahertz and they scored a 400 sorry 4384 points which is a, a fairly significant difference versus the stock which is a score of 3932 on this particular setup but let's put those results in a touch more context, shall we? You know, how does this actually fare against, say, what Intel have to offer at their top end, the i9-9980XE, which has two more cores and four more threads? So that scores about 3,700 points in the same benchmark. So again, while this is just one benchmark, and that is Cinebench, it is still worth bringing up, I feel. Now, for those of you wondering, is 4.3 the best they actually managed? The answer is no. They managed to make it run at 4.4 gigahertz and did run Cinebench with no issues. So this was a increased score of 44.75. Now, this is all mentioned in the overclocking guide, which I uh, mentioned at the start of this video. If you guys want to give it a look-see, you can find it linked in the description below this video. It walks through their entire setup, how to actually overclock. I'm sure many of you are... Pros are overclocking, don't need this guy, but in case you're curious how they actually did it, the steps that they took, it is there for your perusal as a PDF. And if you're curious about getting started with overclocking, it's a pretty decent guide which breaks it down into more manageable steps. So with all that said, let's finish things up today with a spot of gaming news as EA are up to their old shenanigans. So, a patent was spotted by SegmentNext.com. And EA are not strangers to patenting things to do with pushing microtransactions. You may recall the one I discussed quite some time ago that fiddled with matchmaking in order to basically push you to spend money. That was ages ago that I talked about that, but it is somewhere in our back catalogue if you care to go and look for it. So, this next one, the newest one that has been spotted, and again you can find that segment next is article uh, linked in the description below, basically creates a sense of urgency to make in-game purchases as soon as possible. So some of you are going, all right, so you say that, but how does this technology or technique or whatever you want to call it actually achieve this? Well, basically it encourages you to make these purchases as soon as possible because the virtual items will decrease in value over time based on the number of purchases made. So you want to be first in line to buy that hat or whatever because if more and more people buy it, well, it's not gonna be worth as much, basically. But don't take my word for it. Let's read directly from the patent, which again you will find linked below. Quote, offers provided when the game space may decrease in value based on previous acceptances of the offers. A game instance of a game space may be executed to facilitate presentation of views of the game space to users to enable interaction of the users with the game space and or each other by performing operations in the game space in response to commands received from users. Offers may be provided within the game instance of the game space that decrease in value based on previous acceptances of offers. The offers may include a first offer having a first value that progressively decreases based on amount of users that have previously accepted the first offer in order to incentivize early acceptance of the first offer. Now there has been a bit of an update to this story but I just want to mention one last thing before I get to this update and that this patent wasn't actually originally registered by EA, it was registered by Kabam, a mobile publisher. But EA swooped in about a year later to buy the rights and is currently the owner of the patent. So they didn't think of this technology, but they saw it and went, oh, that's a great idea, and, and bought the rights to it. Now, what is this update I just mentioned? EA have actually responded to SegmentNets' article, and they have said, quote, the patent is not part of any current EA games or technology, and we are not planning to include in any of our games. The patent was originally filed years ago without any of our involvement and came to EA through a previous asset acquisition. So, they're basically saying that it's not part of anything, and they're not planning to include it in any of their games, which is good to know. But it still just raises an eyebrow, maybe just because it's EA, maybe I'm biased against the EA and if that's the case they highly, highly deserve it because they have pulled so much crap with microtransactions that anything they do around it I just, I just distrust them immediately because, well, they're the <laughs> just Star Wars Battlefront 2, it exists, the state that it existed in when it came out initially, that's a thing. 
you know, it's all about the, 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 the sense of pride and accomplishment, EA. So, if they never use it, fine. But the fact that they own it is just concerning because it just, again, shows that that's what they would like to do. They've they've gotten the patent because they've just got it in their cupboard. There's something you have something in your pantry and just kind of theirs on just in case. Like a, like a doomsday bunker, I guess. You know, it's sort of there and they might just pick it up every now and again and tweak it and put it in in a way that's not quite so obvious, but in, it's still there doing its thing. I wouldn't put it past EA to decide they want to use it at some point. So I'm not saying we should get out the pitchforks or anything, but it's still mildly concerning that this patent exists and that EA were like, ooh, I'll have that. Still, good to know they're not using it because they probably are well aware that they could not get away with it a second time. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Just have a great deal. And check us out on Patreon if you'd be so kind. But regardless of all that, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.